Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Thousands of families may soon lose child care in North Carolina. This morning, hear about the push happening today for funding as COVID era programs are running out. And temperatures are heating up as we approach the weekend. We could have some record highs by Friday. I'll show you how high the temperature climbs coming up. And we're live from Pinehurst number two with a look at the last round of practice before the start of U.S. Open. Just ahead, we're explaining how heat could play a factor for golfers and fans. I, I love <laughs> that Laura has adapted her golf voice when she's talking, when the she's golfers are behind her. You see a little more quieter there, and I actually have to do the small <laughs> clap there. Again, U.S. Open, we're following that this morning. Thanks for joining us here on WRL News and Fox 50. I'm Chris Lovingood. And I'm Michelle McConaughey. Yeah, following all things U.S. Open, and like Laura mentioned, the heat, because oh it's going to be hot today, but even hotter by Friday. We could reach a record temperature, Amy. That's right. It is definitely going to be hot. It's going to be in the mid to upper 90s for highs by Friday, approaching record numbers. So some big heat for the tournament. This is a look at a different golf course over in Moore County, Southern Pines, the Longleaf Golf and Family Course. A beautiful day for golf today, but temperatures will be heating up starting tomorrow, many of us in the 90s. 71 in Raleigh and Durham, so temperatures have jumped up a little bit. It's 70 in Rocky Mount and in Goldsboro and in Clinton, still 69 in Fayetteville. A good day to head to the pool will stay dry with mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. High temperatures will climb into the upper 80s this afternoon. Tomorrow, 92 for the high, and the humidity goes up a little bit, but it's still not that bad. I think our heat index will stay in the low 90s tomorrow as well. Now, Friday, the forecast high is 96 in Raleigh. The record is 97, so just one degree shy of the record with the heat index around 100. But Friday night, a cold front moves through, brings a little bit of relief over the weekend. I'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit, Ken. At 802, uh, Amy, we just got uh, reports of a crash that just happened. Uh, right, the, the exit ramp that spits you on to uh, US, six, US 1 heading south. Uh, what's important about that is US 1 is a major route heading down to Moore County if you're getting ready to head down to check out those practice rounds. But this is just in the immediate area coming off that ramp uh, onto US 1. So keep that in mind if you're about to head out and head down there. But once you get past that particular area where this crash is happening on that ramp, smooth sailing all the way to Moore County. This is a serious crash that just popped up on 264 in the westbound lanes near Lizard Lake Road. We're not seeing any issues right there in the immediate accident side, but take a look at what you're seeing right there in those uh, westbound lanes coming off of 64. So keep that in mind if you're about to head out this morning. Uh, this other crash that has been we've been monitoring because it's the Beltline, of course, and that's usually a busy spot this time of the morning. Uh, this is on uh, westbound lane near Yonkers Road. You can see the bumper to bumper traffic that's happening right there in that immediate area. To that end, let's take you outside and show you exactly what's going on in terms of, of that particular area. You can't see the crash on this, but once you get past that crash, this is what you have to look forward to. This is I-440 and Capitol Boulevard. Traffic is moving, so to speak, right now in those westbound lanes. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Today, golfers will hit the course for the last day of practices ahead of the U.S. Open, and this year's tournament is gearing up to be one of the hottest. WRL's Laura Levine joins us live from Pinehurst, and Laura, precautions are being made because we even heard from Tiger yesterday. They are expecting these hot conditions. You have to stay cool. Absolutely, and I can tell you, Chris, right now things feel really nice, but we know that will change in the next few hours and in the next few days. Behind me here, you can see this is the final round of practices for these golfers before the start of the U.S. Open tomorrow. And with all of the excitement comes awareness about the dangers of an expected heat wave to take shape. So today we will begin to see the temperatures rise, but by Friday we could see record-breaking heat for the U.S. Open with the heat index at 100. This will have an impact on these professional golfers who will be exerting a lot of energy and doing physical activity during the hottest parts of the day. Fan safety is also top of mind for USGA here, which is why they've provided hydration stations throughout the property and guests can bring 32 ounce or smaller bottles to refill. We did ask Tiger Woods yesterday if the heat will hurt his play at all. I mean, hot and humid is what we deal with every single day in Florida, so that, that's nothing new. Uh, it's it's the matter of just keeping making sure that I keep up hydrated and uh, the mental tax that the heat will bring uh, it's going to bring it to all of us not just me everyone's going to be tested and um, it's going to make for a, 
long, long rounds. Long rounds indeed. So get this, the hottest it has ever been for the U.S. Open in Pinehurst is 90 degrees. We know on Friday we will beat that record. Laura Levine, WRL News, live in Pinehurst. And just so you know, WRL is your home for the U.S. Open as it returns to the Sand Hills. Our team will have complete coverage on your phone, on your tablet, on your TV. And once the first round tees off tomorrow, Jeff Hogan and Gerald Owens will lead our coverage live from Pinehurst. Be sure to tune into WREL for all the action from the first tee to the 18th green. WREL is your home all weekend long, beginning on Friday with second round action through the finals. Happening today, a push to keep hundreds of daycare centers open. Thousands of people who depend on them could be affected when funding runs out at the end of the month. And WREL's Kelsey Coffee is at the Legislative Building in Raleigh this morning. Kelsey, two events are happening today to push for more funding. Michelle, this morning, business leaders and faith leaders will uh, be calling on state lawmakers to fund child care of this as thousands of parents could be without an option to care for their kids. Child care workers rallied in the triangle in recent months about this issue. Groups are requesting state dollars because federal funding is about to run out. A survey shows 29 percent of child care providers expect to close without those federal dollars, leaving nearly 92,000 kids without a slot. The North Carolina Poor People's Campaign is rallying today for more funding, and the NC Chamber Foundation is releasing new data this morning. Those numbers will show how child care impacts workforce productivity and the economy. So that data will be released this morning at 930, and the rally is scheduled for 11 o'clock. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. New information this morning about an apartment complex fire in Cumberland County. The Spring Lake Fire Department confirms a firefighter was hurt trying to put out the flames here. It happened yesterday at the Brooks on 1166 in Spring Lake. Investigators say this started on the third floor balcony and spread throughout the building. Fire crews were able to get the fire under control around 1230 yesterday afternoon. The department says one firefighter was taken to the hospital with injuries to their head, but it's not clear which department they're with. Six different agencies responded, but no one else was hurt. Today, Vice President Kamala Harris will be in North Carolina. Harris will be in Charlotte today as part of her nationwide economic opportunity tour. Governor Roy Cooper will join her during her visit, and this is the vice president's fifth visit to North Carolina this year. City leaders are examining the future of major entertainment venues in Raleigh. City Council talked about the relocation of Red Hat Amphitheater during a work session last night. The venue needs to move to make way for an expansion of the Raleigh Convention Center. The Red Hat would then be rebuilt a block away from its current location. That would result in South Street being closed at Dawson and McDowell. City leaders raised concerns about the impact of that closure. We're really um, working with all of our partners in the area to figure out how we can preserve uh, bike, pedestrian access uh, with or without the closure. A groundbreaking ceremony for the new Red Hat Amphitheater could happen by early next year. Another lawsuit stemming from the Uvalde Elementary School shooting that killed 19 students and two teachers. The victims' families have filed a lawsuit against FedEx and UPS. They accused the companies of multiple oversight when the weapons were shipped to the shooter. FedEx is accused of shipping the gun the shooter used and not verifying his age. The lawsuit also claims that UPS aided in the illegal sale of a trigger system the shooter used, saying it failed to screen the package before it was sent. And change could be coming for how parents can appeal their child's rejection from the North Carolina schools for the deaf and blind. A proposed amendment on the state law could would still allow parents to appeal, but they would not be able to take the case to a judge anymore. It passed through a House committee Tuesday afternoon. Right now, families can make their case to a judge, but the amended bill would put the decision before the school's new board of trustees. Instead, it now heads to the House for a vote. Construction is officially underway on a new affordable housing community in Raleigh. A groundbreaking ceremony happened yesterday morning for a new community on New Bern Avenue. That's just off the Beltline in Raleigh. Now, once completed, New Bern crossings will have 192 units and 40 will be set aside for people at risk for homelessness. Construction could be finished in 18 to 24 months.
Today, local school bus drivers are putting their skills to the test, all for a chance to represent North Carolina at the International Driving Competition in Texas. At the state fairgrounds from 9 a.m. to noon, 30 school bus drivers from across the state will all compete in the North Carolina bus rodeo. They'll show off their knowledge of laws and regulations, pre-trip school bus inspections, and driving maneuvers. Seven of the drivers are from Wake County Public Schools. Elon Musk has dropped his lawsuit against the creators of ChatGPT. The lawsuit that OpenAI says was launched out of jealousy. That's just ahead. Also, new technology could reduce deaths by drug overdose. What the creator is saying about how their device will save lives. And we have the big heat headed our way, but we also have dry conditions. So we're going to have to keep watering for quite some time. I'll show you how long this dry pattern could persist coming up. Good morning, time now 814 on your Wednesday. This is a live look over Apex. That sunshine coming through. It's going to be a hot day today. Good day to hydrate. Stay in the air conditioning if you can. Meteorologist Elizabeth, um, Amy Wilmeth, I'm sorry. She's all right. Uh, <laughs> Amy, <laughs> it's going to be in the 90s. It is going to be hot today. It's going to be hot tomorrow. And the biggest uh, heat day will be Friday. It's going to be very hot Friday. 92 for the high. Thursday, mostly sunny. 97 Friday. That's the high temperature for Pinehurst. It's going to be very hot for the tournament. And then 92 on Saturday, 90 on Sunday. We have a cold front that moves through overnight Friday into Saturday. It drops the temperatures a little bit, but it also drops the humidity. So it'll feel more comfortable over the weekend. Moving on to the tropics, we do have a system we're monitoring. It has a 20 percent chance of development over the next seven days. It's going to move away from North Carolina, but it still could have some indirect impacts along the North Carolina coast over this over the weekend. Some dangerous surf and also perhaps some dangerous rip currents as well. The rip current risk for today is moderate for our southern beaches. I'd expect it to be moderate or maybe even high along the North Carolina coast for the weekend. So if you're headed to the beaches this weekend, just be extra cautious if you plan to spend time in the water. Look at this pretty bleak. No rain chances for the next seven days. We do not expect any measurable rain for quite some time. This is a look at the potential rainfall for the next seven days. Maybe some rain in the North Carolina mountains, but just nothing for central North Carolina. Really nothing for eastern North Carolina, despite that tropical disturbance. So it's going to be very dry. I'd expect the drought to worsen in the next several days and the next couple of weeks. Looking ahead to next week, we'll have below normal rainfall. This takes us through the 21st. So I don't think we'll have any measurable rain until maybe the end of the month, maybe not until after June 25th or so. So very, very dry pattern setting up for us. Also hot too. This is a live look at Lake Gaston. Beautiful out on the lake. This view from the Point Restaurant. It's nice outside right now with temperatures in the 60s and 70s. It's 71 in Clinton with sunshine, 65 in South Hill, 67 right now in Southern Pines. Hour by hour today, it is warm, but the bigger heat will hold off until tomorrow. It is going to be a little bit more muggy though as you step outside. Temperatures will be in the 70s through 11 a.m. At noon, we're at 83, and then our high temperature climbs up to 88 this afternoon. Then it gets hotter tomorrow, 92 for the high. It's going to be hot as we kick off the start to the U.S. Open, the tournament. 96 Friday, approaching a record high, the record in Raleigh, 97. Still hot Saturday, but a little cooler for Father's Day, and then back up to 94 by Monday, Ken. All right, Amy, we want to start off this uh, traffic look with a look at a live look at I-440 and Capitol Bowl. Uh, we got reports of a crash that happened there in the last uh, half hour or so. It was behind that tree, and I think really it's in the clearing phase right now. So that's why you see the cameras trained that way. But you can see that traffic moving away uh, in the westbound lanes right now, moving at uh, rather smooth, smoothly right now. You see all these crashes uh, on our traffic map this morning, mainly on local roads, not affecting any of your major morning commutes this morning. But we do want to tell you about a few crashes that popped up that should be of interest to you. This one in particular off uh, it's US uh, 64 it, there in Apex onto the US southbound lanes of um, US 1. This is important because US 1 is the route that a lot of you will be taking this morning. If you're going to check out the practice rounds down there on, uh, uh, in, in the US Open 
I would recommend Highway 401 down to Fuquay Varina and then making your way over to Moore County to avoid this mess. But once you get past this traffic side, uh, smooth sailing there in US-1. Another crash I want to bring your attention to on the north side of the Beltline. This is near Yonkers Road. You can see the bumper to bumper traffic that's happening right there. Uh, just for your own edification, take it slow as you're about to head out this morning. All right, thank you, Ken. There are concerns about flooding in Florida as a month's worth of rain could fall within just a few days. It's because of a system associated with a tropical disturbance. Heavy rain yesterday caused some flash flooding in areas and it caused hundreds of flight delays and cars had trouble, as you see here, navigating roads because of rising floodwaters. Now, threats and scattered storms are expected to last through the week and into the weekend with upwards of 10 inches of rain possible before the system moves out. Today marks 30 years since the brutal murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. Brown Simpson, ex-wife of O.J. Simpson and Goldman, were both found stabbed to death on June 12, 1994, outside of her home in L.A. These murders led to what was called the trial of the century. Former football star Simpson was charged and tried for the murders, but found not guilty. Simpson was eventually found liable in a civil suit. O.J. Simpson died in April after a battle with cancer. A man from Arizona survived falling nearly 50 feet from a cliff in Switzerland. 25-year-old Logan Moore was recording a video while on a hike, but a wrong step on a slippery rock caused him to fall over the edge of a cliff. He plummeted 25 feet and hit a rock wall that knocked him out. Wasn't done yet, though. Moore then fell into a crevice where he eventually fell another 25 feet head first and became stuck at the bottom. He managed to regain consciousness, but he had to wait for somebody to rescue him. I accepted what it is and kind of said some goodbyes at that point. I didn't know if I was going to make it out. Um, but then at, once I heard my cousin's voice and my friends overhead, I knew that they weren't going to go anywhere until I was, I was freed. Oof, God was looking out for you, my friend. Within 20 minutes, there was a helicopter above him, and rescue crews were able to put a harness around Moore and then remove him from the crevice. He was taken to a hospital, but is now back home in Arizona, recovering from a shoulder and an elbow injury. Former Trump advisor Steve Bannon is asking a federal appeals court to delay his prison sentence. Bannon is expected to report to prison on July 1st to serve four months. He failed to provide documents and testimony to the House Select Committee, the one investigating the January 6th U.S. Capitol attack. He asked the court to rule on his request by next Tuesday, but he plans to go to the Supreme Court if he has to. Lawyers for Elizabeth Holmes are trying to get her a new trial. Holmes' legal team was in the courtroom yesterday appealing her fraud conviction. Holmes was convicted in 2022 of defrauding investors and Theranos, a blood testing company. Attorneys say that she and her former business partner should get a new trial. They're challenging evidence and arguments from the 2022 trial. It's unclear when the federal court will rule on the appeal. And Elon Musk has dropped his lawsuit against the maker of ChatGPT. Musk co-founded the artificial intelligence startup in 2015, then left in 2018. He accused the company of reserving advanced AI technology for private customers. But OpenAI pushed back, arguing that Musk was jealous and the case should be dismissed. Musk's lawyers did not say why they decided to drop the lawsuit. <laughs> Just into the WRA Live Center, talk about a dynamic duo at the Paris Olympics. The Spanish Tennis Federation just announced that Rafael Nadal and Carlos Alcarez will play doubles together for Spain in Olympic competition. It was just three days ago that Alcarez, who's just 21 years old, won the French Open for the first time. Alcarez is widely seen as the heir to Nadal in Spanish tennis. He's frequently said Nadal was his childhood hero, and now he'll be teaming up with the tennis icon in Paris. Meanwhile, Nadal has two Olympic gold medals, one in singles and one in doubles, to go along with his 22 Grand Slam titles. Wow, that's an amazing update. Thanks, Renee. A newly developed device may help reduce deaths by drug overdose if users wear it on their wrists. A startup company in Alabama developed the device. It would help detect and report overdoses by tracking blood oxygen levels. If they drop far enough, the device would send an alert to the person's emergency contact. The man who created the device says it can bridge the gap between victims and life-saving aid. Because of that, that solitary nature of, of addiction and, and the throes of it, right, uh, there, there, there's nobody there to, to identify the overdose happening. 
The startup company is working to get federal and state funding, and the hope is that rehab facilities will be able to buy the devices for people who are at the most risk. Waffle House workers across the U.S. will see a bump in their paychecks. The breakfast chain says it'll raise its workers' pay after pushback from labor advocates. The chain CEO says base pay will increase by at least $3 hourly and then slowly go up to at least $5.25 hourly by June of 2026. But customers' wallets will take a hit for these pay raises. The chain says it'll raise its menu prices. Over the last year, some Waffle House workers hit the picket lines demanding better pay and better working conditions. We are learning more about what led up to a bus hijacking in Atlanta. Coming up, the details of the hour-long chase that spanned two counties. And new mask regulations have passed in both chambers of the General Assembly. What we expect as the legislation makes its way to Governor Cooper's desk. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. Another sunny, hot day. Meteorologist Amy Wilmeth in the WRAL Severe Weather Center. We're going to reach 90 today. Yes, our southern counties will hit the low 90s. It is going to start to heat up today and the humidity creeping up a little bit as well. 71 right now in Durham, mostly sunny at 69 with sunshine in Fayetteville and 71 in Raleigh. You can see a little bit of cloud cover over downtown Raleigh. Right now the dew points at 61, so we're in the humid category now. At this time yesterday we were in the comfy category, but pretty nice weather this morning. We'll have mostly sunny skies. Temperatures will be in the 70s, be in the upper 70s by 11 a.m. And then heating up today, upper 80s in the triangle, but low 90s for some of our southern communities. All right, Amy, happening now in the WRL Traffic Center. We want to bring your attention to all these crashes you see here on the traffic map, really on local roads, not affecting any of your commutes on the major roadways this morning. Uh, this crash is near Lizard Lake Road on 64 coming in from Nightdale. Uh, it's causing some bumper to bumper traffic, so keep that in mind. Uh, this one is on uh, 64, the ramp going onto the southbound lanes of US 1. It's important because US-1 is the route that most of you will take to get down to Pinehurst today to look at those practice rounds. But once you get past that crash sign, uh, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. A crash just cleared on the Durham Freeway, but this is the lingering delay you're seeing right now. This is a live look at the Durham Freeway and Cornwallis Road. Thanks, Ken. Raleigh City Council talked about the relocation of Red Hat Amphitheater during a work session last night. The venue needs to move to make way for an expansion of the Raleigh Convention Center. The Red Hat would re be rebuilt a block away from its current location. And conservative group Moms for Liberty is calling for a new requirement for public school students to pass a citizen test citizenship test before graduation. We will have more news and weather happening on Fox 50. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Today is the last day for practice ahead of a scorching U.S. Open in Pinehurst. What pro golfers are saying about how the heat will affect their game. And we are going to bake under this area of high pressure with some near record heat by Friday. I'll show you what a cold front will do to our temperatures for the upcoming weekend coming up. Parents, there's a new push for your high school student to take a citizenship test. Coming up, who's behind this effort? A lot of stuff we're covering here this morning here on WRL News. We've got the U.S. Open, we've got traffic, we've got weather, lots of coverage. Thanks for joining us here on WRL News and Fox 50. I'm Chris Lovingood. And I'm Michelle McConaughey. We're going to start with weather. We're going to start with the heat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what everybody's talking about this morning, Amy. We're going to reach almost 100 by Friday. Right, the heat index will likely be near 100 Friday. It is going to be a hot tournament out at Pinehurst. This is a live look at North Hills, a beautiful blue sky with some high clouds in the distance as well. We'll have a mix of sun and clouds through the day today, but the sun's really going to heat things up this afternoon and especially tomorrow and Friday. 71 right now in Raleigh and Durham. It's 70 in Rocky Mount, 67 in Southern Pine, 69 in Fayetteville. Uh, let's see if we can go back to the weather graphics, perhaps. Um, 
There we go, just a little technical difficulty. It's gonna be warm this afternoon with some slightly higher humidity. We'll get up to about 88 this afternoon with mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies, but it'll get even hotter in the days ahead. 92 for the high on Thursday, 96 Friday. The record is 97, so getting very close to some record numbers. But a cold front brings a little bit of relief over the weekend with highs back in the upper 80s and low 90s. It also keeps a system in the tropics from making it to North Carolina. I'll have more on that coming up. Okay. All right, at 8.32, Amy, busy morning out there on the roadways, but all, most of the crashes you see here showing up on our maps, really on local roads, not affecting any of your commute on any of our major roadways this morning. I, I do want to tell you about one crash that's recently cleared in the uh, northbound lanes there in, in Durham. This is a Highway, 40, Highway 147 and Cornwallis Road. The crash is near Alexander Drive, but that's not too far away from this live camera. You're not seeing the crash here that, in the clearing phase, but you can see the back up that it's causing this morning there in the Durham freeway. So just keep that in mind if you're about to head out and uh, to Durham this morning. Also in Durham, this crash we've been monitoring for several, uh, for at least an hour now on US uh, 70, uh, Capitol uh, Miami Boulevard in the northbound lanes. It's causing some bumper to bumper traffic in that area. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Elsewhere around the triangle, we huge, it's huge, the usual congestion that's building in the westbound lanes of I-40 coming in from Johnson County, as well as 87 coming in from Nidale and Zebulon. Today is the final day for golfers to practice ahead of the U.S. Open. Temperatures are heating up as we get closer to the start of the tournament. And WRL's Laura Levine joins us live from Pinehurst. Laura, fans are going to have to find ways to beat the heat, not only the fans, but the players, too. Absolutely. Good morning, Michelle. Yes, and as the morning progresses, we are beginning to see more and more of those fans arrive here today. Take a look at the stands here near the practice area. The seats are filling up pretty quickly, and I want you to take a closer look. You can see a lot of people wearing those baseball hats, sunglasses, sun hats, you name it. They're going to need it for this week. Behind me here as well, you can see the golfers here into their final day of practice before the start of the U.S. Open. Along with all of the excitement comes the awareness about the dangers of an expected heat wave to take shape. Today we will begin to see temperatures rise, but by Friday we could see record-breaking heat for the U.S. Open with the heat index at 100. This will have an impact on these professional golfers who will be exerting a lot of energy and doing physical activity during the hottest parts of the day. Fan safety is also top of mind for the USGA, which is why they've provided hydration stations throughout the property, and guests can bring 32 ounce or smaller bottles to refill. We spoke with one fan yesterday who was already feeling the heat. I've been sweating all day. We got a tan going. I expected it. We come from Indiana, so it's a little bit warmer here than Indiana, but they don't have as much humidity. So check this out. The hottest it has ever been for the U.S. Open in Pinehurst is 90 degrees on Friday. We will beat that record. Laura Levine, WREL News, live in Pinehurst. And WREL is your home for the U.S. Open as it returns to the Sand Hills. Our team will have complete coverage on your phone, your tablet, and your TV. Once the first round tees off tomorrow, Gerald Owens and Jeff Hogan lead our coverage live from Pinehurst. And be sure to tune in to WREL for all the action from the first tee to the 18th green. WREL is your home all weekend long, beginning on Friday with second round action through the finals. Parents, an effort is happening today to require your high school student to pass a citizenship exam before graduating. WREL's Kelsey Coffee shares how lawmakers are getting involved in this effort. Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson is supporting that push this morning. He'll be here at the legislative building to talk about what this potential requirement could mean for your student. The group Moms for Liberty is calling for this change. They're requesting that all public high school students pass a citizenship test before graduation. Moms for Liberty is a conservative group that has invested millions into swing state campaigns, including ones here in North Carolina. Today's rally comes as the race for the state superintendent of public instruction heats up. That race is gaining national attention after far-right candidate Michelle Murrow won the GOP primary. The rally is scheduled for this morning at 930, so we'll be sure to keep you updated. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Raleigh.
A pregnant woman is in critical condition after being shot in Durham. The WRL breaking news tracker drove to toddler court just after four o'clock yesterday. Police are calling this a domestic incident. A man also was shot at the same location. He was taken to Duke University Hospital with life threatening injuries. Faith leaders want state lawmakers to do more to fund child care across North Carolina. The North Carolina Poor People's Campaign is leading a rally this morning that is outside the General Assembly. It'll start at Freedom Park at 11 this morning. The group is calling for a meeting with House Speaker Tim Moore and Senate Leader Phil Berger. Hundreds of daycare centers in the state could be forced to close when COVID-era funding runs out June 30th. And today, the man accused of killing Moore County woman Alicia Watts is due back in court. James Dunmore is set to make an appearance in the Montgomery County courtroom today. He is in jail on a $1 million bond as he awaits trial. He's accused of killing his girlfriend Alicia Watts last year. And family and friends of Watts plan to gather for a vigil outside the courthouse. A jury has found Hunter Biden guilty in his federal gun trial, and now the president's son could face up to 25 years in prison. A judge has not set a sentencing date yet, but Hunter is facing prison time and a fine of up to $750,000. He's likely to receive far less than the maximum sentence as a first-time offender. Hunter was convicted on all three counts tied to the possession of a gun while using narcotics. President Biden was seen sharing a moment with his son yesterday after that conviction, hugging him. In a statement, Biden says he will accept the verdict, but added that he will always be there for Hunter, saying nothing will ever change that. One of the high-profile players at the U.S. Open, Rory McIlroy, and his wife, Erica Stahl, have resolved their differences, and they've called off their divorce proceedings. McIlroy initially filed for divorce. McIlroy initially filed for divorce on May 13th. He and Stahl married in 2017. They have a child together. This reconciliation comes as McIlroy prepares for the U.S. Open at Pinehurst. The Northern Irishman is grouped with Scotty Scheffler and Xander Shoffley. They'll tee off at 1.14 tomorrow at Pinehurst number two. And of course, WRO will have full coverage of that. A bill that would make it illegal to wear a mask in public unless it's for health reasons is now headed to Governor Roy Cooper's desk. House lawmakers passed the bill yesterday. Cooper is expected to veto it, but Republicans hold a slim veto-proof majority. State lawmakers came to a compromise on the legislation last week. Wearing a medical or surgical mask to prevent the spread of illness, that's okay. But masking for a protest, that's not. If they're not breaking the law, it's not concerning me. If people want to wear a mask, you can wear a mask. That's up to me. But the, the onus of the bill is if you are breaking a law, if you are uh, criminally active. Lawmakers also layered in some campaign finance rules in the bill. This would make it harder to follow a money trail. And you can find more about this story on our NC Capital section of WREL.com. Today, about 60 survivors of the Sandy Hook school shooting will graduate from high school. Yes, it has been 12 years. What they're saying about how living through that tragedy has affected them. And a beef over sponsorship is getting competitive eating's biggest star off its biggest stage. Reaction to Joey Chestnut's ban from the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. Now let's get you a live look over Chapel Hill this morning on a warm Wednesday. Plenty of people out there. I think the camera might be lagging a little bit. It's okay, though. Meteorologist Amy Wilmoth will share how hot it's going to get as the week continues. Give you another look this morning over at Chapel Hill. Uh, our camera's kind of a little laggy there. It's all right, though. The point you see behind there is that it's going to be a nice day today as you're watching WREL News on the WREL app, on your TV or your streaming device. Although it looks like a nice day, one thing that is worth talking about is how hot it's going to be. Amy Wilmoth will get into that in just a bit. But first, you got a nice photo behind you there, Amy. Yeah, we've had a lot of talk about Pinehurst at the Resort and Country Club with the U.S. Open Golf Tournament. This is another golf course, the Duke Golf Club in Durham. This photo sent in by Jim Maloney of the moon setting over the golf course. If you want to send us a photo, go to WREL.com. Search Weather Watchers and you can post your photos there. And we love showing them on TV. Maybe you're headed to Pinehurst 
Send us your photos if you're headed to the tournament. We'd love to see what is happening out there. This is a live look at the resort and a lot of folks already out there. It's beautiful with the sun shining. Temperatures are warming up. We're in the low 70s in Raleigh and Durham. It's 72 in Goldsboro, 69 in Fayetteville. And the dew points are a little bit higher right now compared to this time yesterday. So it's a little bit muggy outside, but it's not that bad. And it'll be a little muggy today, but the humidity starts to really pick up by the time we get to Friday. Temperatures will warm into the upper 80s this afternoon under mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. It's pretty close to normal for this time of year, but it'll be hotter tomorrow. 92 for the high. The heat index around 93, 94, and then 96 for the high on Friday. The record in Raleigh is 97, so awfully close to the record, and the heat index could approach 100 by Friday. And then Saturday, it's a little cooler. Cold front moves through overnight Friday into Saturday. 91 for the high Saturday. Not much of a heat index because some drier air will move in back behind that front, which will make it feel better over the weekend. This is something new this year uh, provided by NOAA showing us the risk for heat. And um, this is for Friday. We're in the moderate category. There's four categories. It goes from minor to moderate to major to extreme. Moderate means that you need to limit your uh, time outdoors if you're sensitive to uh, the high heat. Not everybody is, but if you are, you need to limit your time outdoors as we head into Friday. We do have a cold front on the way that's going to bring a little bit of relief over the weekend. It's also going to steer this system that could become a depression away from the North Carolina coast. So we'll put this into motion here. This is Thursday. We're going to stay dry for the next several days, but this front is going to help push that low pressure system away from us. We could still have dangerous rip currents and rough surf along the North Carolina coast this weekend, but no direct impacts from that system. 92 tomorrow. It's going to be a hot start to the U.S. Open and then 96 on Friday. Very hot start to the weekend. A little relief from the heat over the weekend. We'll be in the upper 80s for Father's Day, but back into the low to mid 90s by Monday. Air conditioning is getting a workout this weekend. Thanks, Amy. A dramatic scene on highways in Atlanta. Look at this video here. Police say that a man hijacked a bus and then led officers on an hour long chase that spanned two counties. More than a dozen people were on this bus as it swerved through rush hour traffic, even hitting a car and a person who was shot on board that bus later died. Police say that the chase started after a report of a fight on the bus, and once officers were able to stop it, 39-year-old Joseph Greer came out with his hands up. But it's unclear how he may have gotten control of the bus. Police have not released the identity of the person who was killed, and hours earlier, gunfire was erupting at a popular shopping area in downtown Atlanta. Police say that a man got into an argument with another person in the food court at Peachtree Center Mall, and they say he shot that person and two others. An off-duty police officer pulled his gun and then shot the man, according to investigators. And at last two people, at last check, were in critical condition. Today, the Southern Baptist Convention will vote on banning all churches with women pastors. Ahead of that vote, the convention's delegates have already voted one church out of its ranks. The convention voted yesterday to expel the First Baptist Church of Alexandria, Virginia. Last year, two churches were ousted over their belief that women can serve in pastoral roles. Southern Baptist leaders say that allowing women to serve as pastors conflicts with the Baptist faith and message. The FBI and Durham police are investigating after some Duke Energy equipment was shot at and eventually caught fire. Durham police tell WREL they got a call Tuesday morning about the damage. Duke Energy told them the equipment was shot at by gunfire within the last week. Now, that caused a slow oil leak and then a fire on Monday. Duke Energy says about 700 people were without power for about two hours. And this incident comes about a year and a half after two Duke Energy substations were shot up in Moore County. Thousands of people lost power then, and no arrests have been made in that case. Today, about 60 survivors of the Sandy Hook school shooting will graduate from Newtown High School in Connecticut. 20 of their fellow students and six educators were killed in the massacre in 2012. Many of the survivors say they still live with the trauma of that day. Loud noises are still startling. Some say they always keep an eye on the exit in a room, and many have spent years in therapy. The school plans to honor the victims during the graduation ceremony, but details have not been shared. 
Breaking economic news, the Consumer Price Index report came out just minutes ago, and the big takeaway, consumer prices showed no increase in May as it's a gauge on what we pay for goods and services. Inflation did increase 3.3 percent from a year ago, but this cooling of inflation from last month is a welcome piece of news just hours before the Fed is set to make its latest announcement on interest rates. We will show you how the markets react when they open in our next hour of news here on Fox 50. All right, thank you, Renee. Looks like things are green across the board from what I'm looking at as well. Our final teacher of the week this school year didn't discover his passion for education, not until late in his professional life. WRL's Ken Smith introduces us to a teacher at Cedar Ridge High School in Orange County, known for his creative ways of keeping his students engaged. didn't experience a return on all the time he invested in his professional life until he spent some time in a classroom as a substitute teacher. I probably got more fulfillment in that one day of substitute teaching than I did in all the years I did anything else. So that kind of told me that this was right for me and never look back. That was almost 13 years ago. Um, we have a right to be informed. Lapa is an economics and personal finance teacher at Cedar Ridge High School in Orange County. He's known for engaging students about the dollars and cents of life and making it relatable and fun. Just having these conversations with, with these kids and, 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 you know, learning from them um, what their life is like, what their experience is, and it kind of helps me keep up with, you know, not turning too old too fast you know they keep me informed and um but it's it's uh it's very fulfilling that sense of fulfillment he's now experiencing in his professional life actually started with a conversation with a very important person in his life i had a, a conversation with my grandmother my nanan who i told her i said yeah i think i might go into teaching and she had said i think that's a good idea and and it was just the way she said it that you know Maybe she knew before I did. Mr. Lapa, you are WREL's Teacher of the Week. Ken Smith, WREL News. And if you are a teacher out there, bless you. Your job is a hard one, but a necessary one. When the traditional calendar school year begins in the fall, you can nominate a teacher by going to WREL.com and entering Teacher of the Week in the search box. Amazon's contract drivers say that they want more benefits, including overtime pay. More than 15,000 contact drivers filed arbitration claims against Amazon yesterday. They deliver same-day packages for Amazon. The company classifies them as independent contractors. They say they're minimum wage employees. They're unable to sue Amazon because of an agreement that forbids them from taking legal action. Well, this weekend, families have several chances to get out and about and enjoy a free movie screening. WREL Lifestyle Editor Kathy Hanrahan is here. Kathy, you have all the details. Let's start with Friday. There are two options to choose from. You know, this is the time of the year when many towns are hosting outdoor movie screenings. Now, downtown Cary Park is hosting one Friday night from 6 to 10 p.m. It's a screening of the Disney movie Strange World. Um, it's rated PG. Activities start around 6 p.m. with an immersive art tent and food trucks. And the movie's going to start around dusk. And in Garner, there's another screening on Friday night. Tell us about that one. Uh, also Friday night, you know, families can catch a free screening of the movie Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. It's going to be playing outside of the Garner Recreation Center. Pre-show activities start at about 7.45, and the movie will start around 8.45. They're going to have concessions available for purchase. And it doesn't stop there. Saturday, the movie fun continues in Wake Forest. This is one of my favorites. Okay, the town of Wake Forest is hosting a free screening of Minions, The Rise <laughs> of Gru at Joyner Park. The pre-show activities start around 7.30 and going to include a meet and greet with the Minions and then a Minion paper craft. Um, the movie's going to start around 8.30 p.m. Now, with all of these movies, bring blankets, chairs, and, you know, get comfortable for the movie. Also, bug spray or repellent oh, because yes. we're at that time of year. So it's good stuff. I feel like you can't even be outside for more than five minutes. Like, you know, when the sun starts to go down, that's it. You need the bug spray. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So much stuff going on, Kathy. Thank you so much. And for more family-friendly events, you can go to WRL.com and search family.
Another thing happening, downtown Raleigh will have plenty of fun and games for you and your family to enjoy this weekend. The Raleigh Retro Gamers Summer Expo is happening at Moore Square from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday. You're looking at video from a previous event at Triangle Town Center and another location. Food trucks, games, and live music will be available for your family to enjoy, and there will also be more than 80 vendors. I will be emceeing a cosplaying contest. Should be pretty fun out there. The event organizers will also be taking donations virtually for Duke Children's Hospital. And before we go to break, we do want to make sure that we give you a look at the winning lottery numbers. We'll be back with another check on weather and traffic in a couple of seconds.